Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating custom arrowheads for lines in Illustrator. Now this all came about thanks to a comment which I received on one of my videos. And the question that was posed was how would you finish the ends of a diagonal line that is 18 points thick from corner to corner of a square? In this case, the subscriber was finding that their line extended either past the corner or it wasn't long enough inside and left a blank area in the corners. Basically, they couldn't get their line to butt correctly into the corners of a square. They'd searched everywhere for a solution, found nothing and were hoping that I could help. Well, I'm a sucker for anybody who firstly says please and thank you and secondly comes up with some really cool questions for me to solve. Well, my first thought in terms of a solution to this issue was a arrowhead. Would there be an arrowhead in the Illustrator collection that we could use to butt that line into the corner? The answer is that no, there isn't, but we could create our own. So because I haven't actually created my own arrowheads before, I went looking for the process and I'm going to give you a link to this Stack Exchange forum on graphic design because this answer from Westside solves our problem. So I'm going to step through his solution and we're going to draw our own custom arrowhead for a line so that we can make sure that it will butt up into the corner of a square or a rectangle. So the first thing that we need to do is to locate a file called Arrowheads AI and you'll need to locate the one that belongs to your version of Illustrator. In my case, I'm using Illustrator 2020, so this is my version. You'll look for the Arrowheads file that corresponds to your version of Illustrator. On a Mac, that's pretty easy to do. Find is pretty good at finding files. On the PC, the Windows operating system has really bad search engines. So I'm going to give you a link to an application which I use every day called Everything. Download that and use that and you'll never go back to searching for files by file name using the Windows search tools. This one's far, far superior. Now I've located my file. I'll right click it and choose Open Path because I want to see where it's located. We're going to make a duplicate of this file because we're going to change it. And if we make a mistake, then we want a copy of the file to obviously return to. So I'm going to right click and choose copy and then right click and choose paste. And so now I've got Arrowheads Copy AI. I'm going to edit this one and this is going to be my safety if you like. I'm going to copy my folder or file location because that's going to make it easier once we get to Illustrator. Now that I've launched Illustrator, I'll click open. I'm already in the location where the Arrowheads AI file is, but if you weren't, you would just Control or Command V to paste in the path to that file and press enter, and that will take you to the location where you can now access Arrowheads AI and you're going to open the original file, not the copy. The copy is there just in case we make a mistake. We can now assure ourselves that there is no arrowhead here that matches our needs. But there's one that's pretty close that we might use as a sort of guide and it's arrow 10. I'll open the symbols panel because that's where the arrows are located. This is arrow 10. I'm going to make a duplicate of it by clicking here on the new symbol icon and just press OK. It's automatically numbered arrow 40 so it's given a sequential number. I'll double click on it because that opens it up ready for editing. You'll need to zoom in because it's really, really small. Now I've done some of the work already in terms of working out how this is going to work for you. And the solution I found is that we just need to add a point to this line. But let's have a look and see what is actually here in this shape. So I'm going to the layers panel. Let me just make the settings a little bit larger so we can see them. So for this shape, there's actually a sort of group of objects in our symbol. We've got the arrowhead itself, we've got a line, and we've got a no fill, no stroke rectangle. Now you don't want to touch the line or the no fill, no stroke rectangle or this thing's not going to work. The thing that we need to focus on is this arrowhead here. But what I've determined for you is that the height of this line is one point and that's going to help us create a shape to go on the end that is going to be that one point in height. 
So let's go over here and let's start creating things. I'm choosing the rectangle tool. I'll click once in the document and I'm going to make a square that has a width of one point and a height of one point. And we're going to attach to that a point. So we need it to be a little bit bigger. We can't just add a triangle to the end. I've tried that and it failed rather spectacularly. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to Alt or Option drag a duplicate shape away. And we're going to rotate this, but hold the Shift key as you do because you want to rotate it around exactly 45 degrees. Now the height of this is no longer one point. You can see up here, it's not one point. Make sure that you click this icon to constrain the width and height and set it to one point. If you don't see these options on the panel up the top here, you can choose Window and then Transform and you get a dialog that has all these settings in it. And this is what you're looking at setting, the width and height. So now this should line up perfectly with my shape. I'm going to zoom in and make sure it does. Now I'm zoomed in as far as I can go and I'm just eyeballing this and it looks perfect to me. So I'm going to grab both of these shapes and I'm going to join them together to make one shape. Now you can do that with the Shape Builder tool or it's probably just as easy to go to the Pathfinder options here and just click Unite. And that will give you a single shape that is the shape that you need for your arrowhead. So I'm going to zoom out now because we need to place it in the correct position. Right now I'm not deleting the existing arrowhead until I get this one in the correct position. I think it's pretty right so let's just go and get this arrowhead and we can just remove it. So I'm looking at where these two are placed and they look like they're lined up really well, but let's double check that. I'm going to select on my line and if I click on this middle of these nine little boxes here, I can see the vertical distance down this document that this line is. And if I'm reading it across here, it's at zero points. I'm not interested in the X, I'm just interested in this Y value here. Now I'm going to select my shape I'm going to target its middle and make sure that the Y value here is zero. And if it's not zero, I'm going to change it to be zero. But right now we've assured ourselves that my shape is now exactly placed over the line. It's exactly the same dimensions. Everything should be just fine. So what I can do now is just go ahead and save the Arrowheads AI file. So I'll choose File and then Save. And I'm coming up with an error and you will probably come up with an error. If you don't just save it, that's fine because it's going exactly the right spot, but I can't save mine to the correct location. So what I'm going to do is choose File and then Save As, and I'll put it somewhere where I can find it. So I'm going straight up here to the desktop and I'm just going to pop it onto my desktop. Now I'm going to close down Illustrator and let's go to the desktop and find that file. So I'm going to open a new window for my Windows Explorer go and find my desktop. Here is the Arrowheads AI file. I've got the original location of the file opened up here. So I'm just going to drag and drop this in. I'm going to be told that there's already a file with that name. Yes, of course there is. I'm going to click here to replace it and I will need to give administrator permission to overwrite that file. Now I'm an administrator, so that's just fine. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and restart Illustrator. You may find that Illustrator takes a little while longer to restart than usual, but the writer here suggested that that may well be the case. So I'm going to create a new document and we're going to try our new arrowhead. So let's create a new document. Let's go and select the rectangle tool. I'm going to make sure it has no fill, but it does have a stroke. I'll hold the shift key because I want to create a perfect square. I'll click outside of the square to deselect it and now I'm going to add my line. I'm going to make it an 18 point line. I'll try and line it up as best I can. Hold the shift key so it's constrained to that 45 degrees and draw in my line. Now I'm going to make sure it's lined up perfectly, which it's not. So I'll go to View and then Outline. This will allow me to line everything up perfectly. Now this top line looks perfect, but I'm sure that the bottom one is not. I'm using the direct selection tool to target this point. I'm still holding the shift key because I want to constrain it to a perfect 45 degrees and now it's lined up perfectly. 
when I go back and choose view preview, you can see what the problem is. Obviously, the line is going over the edge of our square, but we now have an arrowhead we can use. I'll select on my line, I'm going to stroke and I'm going to arrowheads here. I'll drop the little menu down and I'm going to the very end to arrowhead number 40. And I'm going to attach it to both ends of the line. So I'll go and attach it to the second end of the line. And now when we look at our line, we've got a perfect ending. It's going to butt neatly into the corners of our square. Now while this is working perfectly for a square, it's going to fail at a rectangle. So I have the direct selection tool selected here. I'm going to select over everything on this side of the shape and just pull everything out to create a rectangle with our angled line. And you can see that this solution is really only going to work with squares and it's not going to work with rectangles. So that begs the question as to whether there's another way that we can solve this problem when we're working with things that are not regular shapes. It's going to work perfectly with a square. I still think it's a good idea to create that arrowhead for the square, but it's not working here for our rectangle. Now there is a possible solution that we could use for a rectangle, but in the process we're going to lose the line. We're going to be converting the line into a filled shape. So let's see how we would do that. I'm again just going to make an any size rectangle. I'm going to put a line across it that is 18 pixels in thickness. I will need to make sure it's lined up, so I will go to view and outline and just check either end to make sure that it's lined up perfectly. And you'll want to do that before you do anything in terms of work on the line itself. And making sure that you're using the direct selection tool, that white arrow tool, and not the black arrow tool when you're making these edits, because you want to just change one anchor point at a time, not the whole line. So now that we're back here in our regular view, I'm going to select the line and I'll choose Object and Expand Appearance. Now we want this to be a filled shape and right now that's not what it is. So let's go and repeat that with Object and Expand. What we want is a fill and not a stroke. Let's go to the Layers panel. Let's see what it is that we have here. So I have a group and a path inside the group and this is this filled shape. So I'm going to take it out of the group because we don't need it in a group any longer. Let's go and look at its end. The simplest way of carving off these ends is going to be to use a rectangle to do it. So I'm just going to go and get a different color for the rectangle I'm about to draw because it's going to make it easier for you to see what's going on. You can draw a rectangle or a square, it doesn't really matter. You're just going to place it over the end of this shape. You want it to be within the line so it's going to set itself either on this line here or slightly inside it. You'll select your rectangle and the line and go to the Pathfinder and just select minus front and that will carve off the end of that shape. And you're just going to do that on each of the ends and in each of the positions. So again, moving the shape into position, selecting the shape and the line and going and choosing minus front because the shape is the last thing that you drew. It's at the front and so you're just removing it the square from this shape here. And we'll go down and do it to the other end. I'll just create both of my squares here. We'll go and select this square and the line minus front. You'll see that the square is being sacrificed each time, so you will need a new square for each one of these. Now, the line is on the top, the square is at the bottom here. We can do one of two things. Either we can reverse them here in the layers palette, or we can select both of them and instead of selecting minus front, we'll choose minus back. Here's minus back, click that and it's removed. So now we have the same end result, but in this case, this line is no longer a line, it's a filled shape and it's a six sided shape. It's just that some of the sides are really small and some of them are really long. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've learned something about working in Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.